okay, so you have narrowed down that you really like the idea of Buckeye. But I would ask you why and where in Buckeye? Because I'll tell you, it's not just one type of housing. It's not one type of area. It's not one type of lifestyle. It is so many different things to so many people. And no one has covered Buckeye. Like I'm going to cover in this video for you. We are going to be talking about farm properties. We're going to be talking about Verado. That's probably the most well-known community out there. We're going to be talking about new construction in the city of Buckeye. We're also going to be talking about Terra Volis. That has been a topic for a very long time. And we're also going to touch on Sun City Festival. Most importantly, we're going to go out to look at the King's Court, the subjects that live in the city of Buckeye right now and what they're saying. So you're going to want to stay to the end of the video. Let's get through all this. We have a lot to cover. So let's first talk about what Buckeye is. Buckeye is and has been farmland for decades, century. I don't know if I want to say centuries, but that's predominantly what you will find in Buckeye before the year 2000. So we are talking beautiful farming community. We are talking vast green open air, roosters, horses, dairy, wide open space. And this is why we are out here in this particular area of Buckeye. So we are going to take the Jack Rabbit exit right off of Interstate 10. We're going to head south and we are going to take a look at what we are getting a ton of requests for us right now. That didn't make sense, but you knew what I meant. We are getting a lot of people that are like, I want space. I want acreage. I want to have a place for all my toys or my animals. And I don't want an HOA and I don't want to break the bank. So let's take a look at this ranch style farm property. It is on a shared well. It is on septic. And the goal for most of the people that buy out here is they can almost go completely off grid and they love it. And once you get in, once you pay for the housing and you install solar, and if you have your own private well and you have septic, your costs are minimal if you're okay with the commute. So really, when you look at the geography of B Buckeye, it is the largest city in the entire greater Phoenix area, and it is mostly undeveloped. So that's why we're seeing a lot of talk in the news about what's going on in Buckeye. So let's take a look at this ranch house and tell me what you think. And I'll let you know after we see it, what happened after the showing. As we're driving, we have just seen it here. Hi guys. I think Buckeye is so far. <laughs> It's really far on the west side. Yeah. yeah, we're driving out there to show a home to a client who is looking for a property that has a lot of land over an acre and no HOA. Get this kind of property under 700 is one hour. So we're driving out here and uh, it's a long drive. Um, even like I said, Interstate 10 um, in the middle of the day is not a problem. Right. But you start looking at morning time or late afternoon time, it's pretty congested. You feel like you're out in rural USA, which honestly, that is what Buckeye is. <laughs> you get a combination of manufactured homes and uh, then you also get some industrial. A couple of taco shops, yeah. we'll have to hit them on the way back, yeah. sure. No doubt you will get the best Mexican food at Burr out here. There's so many taco shops. We're still driving like really far south off of Interstate 10. And now we're getting not deserty area, but to the farming area, as you can see. The tractor even. Yup, there goes the tractor. Here it is, okay. Thank you so much.
you're gonna live in a place like this, you're gonna need to love animal smells and sounds, which I do. This is really nice. So it's got a nice private dirt area right here. There's some fencing. Fencing is pretty expensive, so I can hear horses going, roosters. I can hear a train. Um, and then you have this nice grass area. That's probably the septic way out there. There's some horse stalls. home was listed just to let you know right around the mid 700s it'd been on the market for a while so we were able to negotiate a fantastic discount price and our client is so excited and they are going they got the house for a high 600s they are going to be building a workshop and he loved, he's just about getting ready for retirement. He's talked to the neighbors. He knows all about everybody. They have car enthusiasts over here. We have horse properties, lots of roosters going off in the background when we took a look at it. And they are just excited. They just cannot wait to move in here. He is working in downtown Phoenix and he is okay with a 40, 45 minute commute each morning because when he gets home and on the weekends, he's just gonna enjoy his peace and quiet. All right, let's head out to the next topic. Um, and that is going to be Taravallis. We're going to continue west on Interstate 10. And you'll hear me and Jesse Lee talk a little bit about how much further outside of the town, like Buckeye exits are one point, but then we keep going out another, we're total of 55 miles outside of the greater Phoenix area. We of course had to stop. Yeah. Oh, we got our food. Look at this cute little thing. This is our salsa. <laughs> Which is? What's that? Tostada de ceviche. Oh, you got the ceviche so, to go on top. Oh, nice. Oh, oh like, <gasps> yum. It's all packaged to go. Yeah, look at that. All right, let's see what mine is. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. So good, so good, so good. All right, so now we're gonna go out a little further and we're gonna go check out the new community called Terravalis that is still a couple years away, um, but there's been a lot of hype about it for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. The land was originally purchased over 20 years ago by the Howard Hughes Corp and they've been talking about it. They finally broke ground two Octobers ago. So the last time we were out here, they were just barely doing some grading work and we wanted Pretty to check out. Dirt. Yeah, yeah, it was still dirt. So it's funny, if you go to their website, they make it look like there's paths already, you know, and, and mountain views and there's not. We're gonna show you, but we're gonna check it out for ourselves. So again, we're already 30, mi almost 30 miles outside of Phoenix. We're gonna be going a total of tw uh, 55 miles outside of Phoenix. And it feels like you're trying to have two more miles and then we have to head north because we're going around the mountain okay so right when you get off the freeway this is what you'll see again it's more rural properties it's where people come out to ride their four-wheelers their dirt bikes um shoot some guns yeah yeah give us some feedback um, this girl's a hunter <laughs> i'm a new hunter and uh, you have to well you have to put in for for hunting so you have to put in for whatever animal you want and you can put in for the area there's areas the whole state has numbers uh, has like numbers it's a, yeah area yeah. so you know we put in for deer um and i think you can pick a few areas i might be wrong i have to ask me um you can you know and then if you get drawn then you have a tag and then you can hunt but here's one animal you do not need a tag for coyote oh yes they are not a protected I did species that. they're considered they, they're a problem. They're a problem. They kill the other animals too. Yeah. And that's what we don't want that. Yep. So Taravalis, in the end, will be, they are planning 100,000 homes. This is very much like a city called Summerlin, which is in um, Henderson, just outside of Las Vegas, um, Nevada. 
And they started planning Summerlin in the 50s, 1950s. And so they have been building on that community and it is world renowned. They are getting still top rated community awards of the country is Summerlin, Nevada. What took Nevada over 30 years to build and where they're at right now, that's what it's gonna take for Terra Vallis to really become somewhat of a desirable city. But here's the research I did for you. First of all, we went out here, obviously, and we took a look at where they're at. For the last year, over a last, the last year, they have been just working on the infrastructure, the grading, and, and just kind of getting everything cleared to the point where they are starting to install their underground systems right now. They're starting to like pave ways for the curb and gutter, and we obviously see some walls going up here. They say that they are going to be releasing the first set of models in about one year's time. They say in early 2025, which means that the first resident will probably live in Terra in 2026. So as you can see, this is still a, a far off dream. It takes time for these kind of things. They currently do, I did verify this for y'all, they do have 7,014 water certificates already. So yes, there's still a lot more that they have to get, but they're not gonna, the state's not gonna give them all 100,000 at once. So 7,000, that's gonna take a couple years as it is. Like literally those 7,000 were, were safe until 2030 for them to request anymore. It will be an amazing city. I just don't know if this girl's gonna be around literally to see this because it's probably gonna take about 20 to 30 years to really make this a beautiful city. I know I'm talking very morbid like, but you get what my, you get what I'm saying. All right, let's head back into town. And here's the funny thing. We were on our way in back into town and all of a sudden we saw horses on the side of the road. I'm like, yep, that's what you're gonna be like living amongst. So we're heading back into town. We're gonna talk now pop on in to the infamous Verado. Now here's the funny thing. I gotta tell you guys this. Tell you, when you live in Verado, you tell people you live in Verado, you don't say you live in Buckeye. And the people that live in Buckeye, not Verado, do not like that. Buckeye before Verado came around, which was a little over 20 years now, um, it was predominantly farming, ranch style homes, a lot of mobile homes, trailer parks, um, and very, very old homes. So it it, it wasn't what you could, would consider um, a desirable metropolitan growing area. It was a slow moving, on purpose, a slow moving, quiet ranch farming community with a couple of dive bars, couple good restaurants, a good butcher in downtown Buckeye. And that's all you really needed. You have all kinds of little local events, like you have local little parades and little festivals. You don't need the big city. You don't need the big shopping. You don't need the traffic. You don't need the congestion. That's what it was until Verado came around. And Verado has changed Buckeye because people were like, oh, build it and they will come. And Verado, I have to tell you, it is a community that stands alone. I'm telling you, it is so different than any other community in the greater Phoenix area. But here is the biggest challenge. Number one, it is pricey. Let's talk a little bit about the benefits though of Verado, because if you can stomach that buy-in fee, if you want to call it that, it's called the community enhancement fee, there's a lot of benefits. Let's take a look. So we are heading out to Verado for you guys, and um, we're on Interstate 10 right now. We just passed the closest target before we get to Verado. So that's going to be the drive. It's about 10 miles. I'm going to say 20 minutes. All right. We are just about to exit Verado, and you know it's right here also at Verado Way and Interstate 10? Costco! Yeah. There's a, a brand new Costco. Brand new. And there's more shopping. The Grotto Marketplace is being built right now. We're going to check it out right now for you. Yep. Let's see. So we are about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes from right here to the nearest Target. And that's going to also include, and the reason we just kind of picked that spot, it's kind of a mega shopping area that has like Ross and Marshalls and Five Below and Dollar Store. So all that's going to be about 20 minutes from here. Um, as we enter into Ferrado, there is um, Shell Gas Station, there is Culver's, there's Taco Bell, Wingstop, Wingstop uh, lots of little like 
lash place, get your hair done. What is it? Zupas. Oh, there's a Zupas? Oh, Zupas. We have a Starbucks, we have a nail salon, and we will start driving into beer and cheeseburgers. Let me tell you, you know you're on the map when you got a cold beer and cheeseburger. And look at this beautiful drive-in. This is what stills my heart. Oh, Dutch Brothers too. Jersey, Jersey Mike's? One of my Jersey Mike's? What? Not a lot of little stores here yet. Well, I shouldn't say yet. Um, Main Street's just kind of a, a builder created center downtown. You're going to see more of the um, new restaurants and shopping um, closer to the freeway. There's two parts of Verado. The, the lower part, if you want to call it that, the more hustle and bustle, that is going to be, let's just call it the general population. There is no age restriction. And as you get a little closer to the mountain, that is called Victory. Victory is a 55 plus community, but it's very different um, in the sense that as Victory, you still have Victory owners still have access to everything in Verado. So if you are 55 plus, you want to live in a quieter part of town, maybe closer to the mountain, maybe even on the golf course, you don't have to live amongst the gem pop where you might have a lot more traffic. You're going to have probably younger homeowners that might have motorcycles or razors or kids running around playing at the park because there's parks throughout the entire Verado. It's amazing. If you want a little bit quieter, it might be appealing to be in victory. There is just nothing like Verado victory. I'm telling you, nothing, nothing. Even the Scottsdale communities, I'm telling you, victory, Verado, it's nice. It's like Mayberry. It is. It's truly like a little Mayberry. They have two golf courses. They have a few restaurants. They have even more restaurants that are closer to Interstate 10. They have a whole new marketplace that's going to be going in, and that will be within a two years period of time. They've already broken ground. We've seen a couple of restaurants that we've named here and earlier in this video, but we also have um, coming in, we have um, Harkins Theater. We also have a Target coming in and a brand new Safeway. And those are going to be the anchor stores, and we're going to see even more retail tailors and restaurants, and that's going to be within a two-year period of time. Verado, not in the 55 plus, in the resale is starting in the mid 400s. So I'm really liking that, guys. If I was going to buy a Buckeye in the mid 400s, this is where I would buy. I, there, it's a stronger resale market, and it's just more appealing. Just saying. That's kind of my little and skinny in there. All right. So we've taken a look at Verado. Let's go out to some of the new construction that is now just outside of Verado. But be careful, guys. I'll tell you, the salespeople in the sales office, they are hard selling. They're trying to tell you it's all that Verado is, but it's not as expensive. But you know what? It's further away from everything. And what am I talking? I'm talking specifically about Sienna Hills. So Sienna Hills has been building for a little while already. And it's nice because they already have the community pool, but that pool is just nothing like the Verado pool. Now, is it $5,000 difference? I'm just gonna take that as that general number to buy into over at Verado. I don't know if I would say it's that much difference, but I'm gonna let you guys decide. Let's take a look and see, this community hasn't even barely opened. They're actually doing their um, grand opening in a few weeks from when we actually shot these videos. So we're gonna give you an inside scoop here. And let's take a look at the models and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what those prices are. All right, so we are heading west, but we're super close to Culver's, the Animal Hospital. I can see Interstate 10 here. They're gonna eventually be building, I wanna see some medical offices up this way too. But, uh, here's, the, here's my thing too from, uh, for new construction. Do not listen to any realtors that talk about what will be there unless there is already approval from the city council planning agendas. So I just, I hate when they, they over promise and under deliver. That's all I got to say. Here we go. Sienna Hills. Well, different floor plans in this community. And there is the mountain. Yeah. Clearly a school because we're in a 15 mile an hour zone. Oh, there's a swim club. Check that out too. And let me repeat over and over again. Don't ever give them your 
name and contact information if you are not with a realtor representing you. The builder pays for our services. There's no reason to go into a builder site without representation. Barely started building here. They only have a couple specs. The rest of them are gonna be built from the dirt phase. They're not offering too many concessions, to be honest with you. Um, they're offering, if you use their preferred lender, $10,000 towards the closing costs. But I'll be honest with you, most of the time it's because the preferred lenders have slightly higher interest rates and so you gotta use that money to buy your rate down. So in my opinion, that's kind of a wash. Well, thank you, Jesse Lee. You're welcome. Oh, I like this floor plan. Oh gosh, this is so familiar to me. Love this full bath right here. Yep. What do you guys think the price point is? Tell us a little bit about this one again. What's the square footage? It's 1920 square feet, the main floor plan. And how many bedrooms? Um, three bedrooms or four bedrooms. I want to say this one has three bedrooms, two and a half baths. Right, model. because it has that office. Yeah. Two bedrooms up front and one guessing the master on the floor end. This is, I like this floor plan. And for multi-generation under 2,000 square feet, this is a nice, comfortable feel. Really tall ceiling. Look at the top, the coiffured, say it, coiffed, coiffured, whatever. Ceilings. <laughs> Look at the width of that door. It's crazy. Yes. Even if you don't have mountain views, I'm going to show you the front yard views on this one. This home is up on a ledge a little bit. Um, actually, the whole community is. Um, so you also get a little bit of, the, I know it sounds funny, the freeway views. Oh, look at this nice shower. Nice size closet too. I like that. You're not going to get in my way. Look at these added windows. These are definitely an upgrade. I don't know if we can go out there. Some builders allow it. Yep, this builder does. Now this is a small lot. So they have different lots with a 50 foot width. And also they have an upcoming series with a 60 foot width. Look at the outdoor covered patio. Yes, it's a small backyard, but look at this view, guys. Oh, my word. Let's check out the next model. Okay, check this out, guys, as you're walking out of the house. Look how cool that is. That's a cool aesthetic. And, of course, the mountain views aren't bad either. <laughs> All right, we're going to go in the Bartlett now. This is a two-story. We have brown cabinets and gray cabinets. Can you guys hear that Air Force? Darn it, we should have been outside when yeah. the jet was flying through. We are actually quite far from Luke Air Force Base, but we are in an area, obviously, in the flight path. I could hear that in the house, guys. I don't know if you can hear it out here. I can't see it. It's just rumbling. And I'm telling you, it's pretty far from here. It's just, again, the flight path. But while we're out here, might as well check out that beautiful backyard. This backyard feels bigger just because the footprint of the house is smaller. So in this backyard, you, they have obviously um, fire pit, barbecue. You could have put these in a better place and then use this center part for a swimming pool. Oh yeah. You probably, you're not, you guys aren't going to be able to see what we see. They're protecting our country. Yay. Thank you. Oh yeah, there's more. Can, I don't know if you guys can see them. That is truly anywhere in the, the West Valley, north of Interstate 10. That's going to be Litchfield Park, Glendale, Sun City, Peoria. 
Oh, wow, look at this. I feel like this is a whole nother house. This is a really big loft. So what do you guys think the base price is on this home? Okay, here we have an upstairs laundry. This is it, do the laundry. Uh, right. <laughs> Own bathroom it's its own bathroom four full bathrooms and a walk-in closet so we don't get very many clouds and when we do we get so excited look a cloud these two homes that you just looked at okay the first model that you looked at what did you guys think did you comment below i want to see those comments but that came in at four hundred and seventy-one thousand base price so you are going to spend about 20 to 25% at the design center. So when I say 471, 1.20. Okay, so now we're at 565 for that home. Now we still have to probably do a lot premium. So it's going to be about five grand. We're at five, 570. And then we have to put whatever we want in the backyard. And let me tell you, it's not as cheap as everybody thinks it is. And I would not recommend you put rock back there. Do it right the first time, because once you put that rock in there just to kind of hold you over, trying to get rid of it, it's going to cost you more money. So you're going to be into this home for about $600,000. I'm telling you, you could get, um, in my opinion, a beautiful home in Verado, although it's a little bit older, for less money. Just saying. All right, let's pop on over to Sun City Festival. This is also part of Buckeye. It's on the other side, literally. On the other side of the White Tank Mountains, I'm telling you, Buckeye is ginormous. I saw the beauty in Sun City Festival. I did see the beautiful mountain views, and I said it in one of my other videos, which if you haven't watched that video on Sun City Festival, you can click right here and you can link right to it. We'll actually connect it to you at the end of this video. Um, and you can just go right on over to Sun City Festival. But here's the thing, guys. There's three, there's three, I don't want to call them golf courses because there's only one golf course that each have nine holes. So you have 27 holes. So you play nine, you can play another nine. I had to think for a moment, nine times three. You can play another, so you can play 27 holes if you can get on the green. There is a very long waiting list during peak season and they are selling massively more homes out there and there are no, there's not a grocery store and they'll tell you oh it's not that far it's only about 10 minutes away that's only one grocery store so it's not like you have a lot of choices here's the thing if you are looking for a 55 plus community actually it's a 45 plus community shame on me i said that wrong 45 plus community if you're 45 years old i don't know why you would live out here that to be honest with you <laughs> there is not the social stimulation that typically a 45 year old is looking for. Maybe it is taking into consideration that one of the spouses is 45 and the other one is 55, 60. But here's the thing, guys, the vast majority of the people that were there when I was there were over 70. I felt like a spring chicken. So it was fun for me. These are actual comments in a Facebook group. And as you can see here, the name of the Facebook group, I encourage you to um, join it, if nothing else, to just get to know the area. One of the things, again, there is a very distinct difference of residents that live in Verado and those that do not. And you can see from this post right here, it gets really kind of nasty on some of these groups. So I, I again, I'll be glad to have an offline conversation. I'm not going to put it on video here, but I'm telling you there is a difference. So if you're buying in Buckeye, even if you're buying just out of Verado, like I said, the other community, what was it called? Sierra, Sienna Hills. Um, you're not in Verado, so you're going to be treated differently. I thought this post was very interesting too. And I would say that the reason there is a lot of homeowner disappointment is because these people that are buying the new construction homes and the cheaper homes, the ones that are complaining that there's not a lot of things for the kids to do out in this area, they bought new construction homes from salespeople in the sales office that are telling you all the great things and why you got to buy there or realtors that are just trying to make a sale. I will tell you, if you haven't watched my videos, this mouth has no filter. And I will ask you, 
what's important to you. There are many people, we have an elderly gentleman that decided he was looking actually at Maricopa and Goodyear, I'm sorry, Maricopa and Buckeye. He decided on Buckeye and he loves it because he goes to visit his grandchildren in California. It makes total sense. He's like, I don't need obviously things for kids. I don't need movie theaters. I don't need Target. He's like, I go up to Costco and Ferrado, um, you know, once a month. I mean, it takes him, you know, like probably three months to go through his toilet paper. There's a buyer for every house and a house for every buyer. But this does not fit all of everyone's dreams the same way it does to each other. So I will ask the right questions so that you can come to your own conclusion, what part of the greater Phoenix area works for you? There is a lot more affordable homes in, or I should say, well, yeah, in and around the greater Phoenix area than just Buckeye and some that are closer in. You gotta call us. We really, really set the bar completely apart these, there are people though that love living in Buckeye. And those are people that are looking for living outside of the hustle and bustle. You can see this here. This particular poster said there, what they don't like is the lots of traffic. You're going to be spending more money on gas. Take that into consideration. Also, when they even just make a comment about it driving back and forth for work, but it's also shopping. Like you're, you're going to go into town. You're going to be doing this probably like every other weekend. You're going to be doing bigger grocery trips. You're going to want to probably have a freezer in their garage, things like that. I want to point this out because I'm really saddened by this very, very much. I'm a happy girl. Um, but if you look here, this person makes a comment about dumping animals and that Buckeye being um, a focus for that. Now, the new construction is going in that ugly desert that I was telling you about. And you can beat me up. I'm just being honest with you. But the ugly desert comes a lot of things. Dumping animals, which just breaks my heart. There's no surface water out here. So if you... If an animal is dumped in the hot time of the year, they have no chance. And it does. It just breaks my heart. We also have a lot of wild critters out this way. Um, we, right now, with the time of this video, it's springtime. It is the Coyotes, Cubs, um, well, that sounds like a uh, hockey team and a baseball team. But no, I am talking about the wild animals. Um, and yes, keep your little animals in house. Again, if you live in a ranch, you don't have a little like foofy dog. You probably have what I have, like a, an Australian shepherd. You have a healer. You have, you know, farm dogs. Um, you also have horses. You don't have, again, the little dogs. There are coyotes in this area. There are javelina in this area. There are also... Um, wild cats in this area. There is also, we have a, a very large population of um, prey, um, what do you call them? Birds of prey, birds of prey. So we have owls, we have turkey vultures, eagles that are going to come in and they're going to take those little dogs. This part of the greater Phoenix area um, has this type of living. You're going to also have gunshots, you're going to hear people setting off M80s. You're going to have um, teenagers drinking out in the desert unless they get caught. Um, there's also going to be off-roaders. You're going to see motorcycles. You're going to see um, SUVs. No, not SUVs. Uh, yeah, um, ATVs. Oh, my gosh. So there's a little bit of wildness out here, and you should be aware of that. That's why you got to give us a call. <laughs> All right, guys, you have to give us a call. If this is not the most thorough Buckeye video, I want to hear which one you like better. I'm just kidding. You got to give us a call. I'd love to do better and get you all the information you're looking for. You just got to let us know what that is. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. Send us an email. Days, nights, or weekends. We got your back when moving to Phoenix, Arizona.